Hey, what's going on? Rich here, bringing you a brand new workout that uh, we're doing for our DecaFit and High Rocks preparation. So in this video, just gonna go through the workout, what it was, go through the different movements as it's happening and talk about some of the different pointers. This is a series we're gonna start bringing to you every week, every other week or so, just as I prepare for different events and just to kind of talk about some of the philosophies behind why we're doing some of the movements and why they're kind of built the way that they are. So for this workout, it is built around preparation for DecaFit on May 15th in 2021 in, um, uh, in Florida, in West Palm Beach, Florida, and then also for a High Rocks event that is gonna be early June in Orlando. So the demands of those events are pretty similar, So, but there's gonna be some slight differences. So being able to work both of those things in is going to kind of be the, the tricky part of this. Um, so let's just kind of get into it. So here's the workout as it, it looks from the start. So with the uh, a, a regular warm up, the first workout is going to be sleds and runs. So it's gonna be 20 calories in the assault bike, 400 meter run, 400 meter sled push, 400 meter run, 20 calories on the assault bike, 400 meter run, and then uh, 400 meter run, then 40 meter sled push. So let's get into the workout. But first, as before we get into it, please hit like and subscribe so you can get all the newest videos here. Also, there's a free guide to running faster for long distances that you can get for free and directly into your inbox. So find that link in the comments below and let's get into it. So as you get started directly on the assault bike, uh, so it's 20 calories is a little bit less than what the called for prescription in DecaFit would be. And you can see right from the jump, this is something I've been putting a lot of time in on is just generating the power output while trying to maintain the cardio piece. So you can see head up, the arms are on the outside and the bike setup is really important for this. You wanna have it so that your knee gets to be almost extended to the bottom half of each specific uh, turn here. So, and also setting the seat up. So it seems like the, the setup is pretty forward, but that's gonna just put your hips in a better place to generate as much power as possible on this bike. And again, my hands, you can't quite see it, but they're set up to the outside of the handles there. Again, just to have a little bit more of an advantageous push and pull type of feel. So during this first portion of the workout, I was about 57 seconds that was holding about 74 to 75 uh, um, RPMs on the the bike itself. So we'll skip through the 400 meter run. I'm coming in. This is the first time I've done a, a workout with a heavy sled. And this is the High Rocks weight, which is uh, 370 pounds. So right from the jump coming in off of the assault bike and then back onto the sled, I was kind of in for uh, a bit of a rude awakening here, as many are. So right from the jump, it, like, I was struggling. <laughs> you could see here the weight is heavy. Uh, my form isn't dialed in. I was a little bit tired. I had done a run workout before this where I was doing some 200s and some faster sprints, uh, but the exhaustion is going to just be part of it. So I finally kind of get in, got into the flow of it. Um, I don't know why it felt more comfortable to hold the um, my head to the side of the the plates there but it just was and this is really where the struggle was in the workout was the the time it took between each sled push so I was able to kind of get it this this was about uh, 10 meters or so of this of this turf um, I was able to get it there in in one push typically by the end of the workout it wasn't as um, consistent or fluid but the rest time in between was definitely the struggle and this was and I, I it was 40 meters on this just because that's like what I had um, that's just what this gym setup was for uh, high rocks itself it's about 50 meters it's um, of the total push so it's getting pretty close to it and and doubling the and almost doubling the volume in this entire workout so here let's see how long this takes this is uh, it's <laughs> just the the amount of effort that it took was very high. So you can see I'm just kind of like wasting time here uh, just because it just takes a whole lot of effort. So between each bout was, between this bout in particular, it's been 20 seconds now and I'm just like kind of thinking about it. And that's really where there's gonna be need to be time to be made. So that was 26 seconds of rest, um, which is 
an incredible amount. So that's something that I really need to work on. And again, this is my first time going through it. So I wasn't really sure how it was going to feel. I've been working on sleds and just and doing a little bit heavier, heavier of the weight and working on just like maximum pushing ability. But this is the first time like under fatigue and doing it for this long. So um, I did not know that what the demands were going to feel like. And my legs weren't necessarily burning too bad. It was just like hard to push it just took like a lot of energy with each step so it was like a maximum effort for a longer time than that then typically i would be uh, ready to kind of put that out for uh so that one was a little bit less again that was still about 20 seconds it still quite a bit um where I, so i definitely need to, to clean that up a bit and i think the actual specificity of the workout will help with this um, i will continue to kind of work on heavier sled pushes just to kind of build that capacity throughout the actual pushing itself but i just need to kind of get on this thing and and push it out uh, here i try to uh, do straight arm um that doesn't work and on this sled in particular when i go high it kind of tips up onto its front so i need to get pretty low on it um and for me to get there with my specific mobility overhead i can't really get that hip angle that i need to push it powerfully with my hands with my arms extended over my head so that's why i kind of need to get my shoulders up in here and my face really close to those plates um each time so i do finally get it done and head out the door so the sled the first 400 was about 136 which isn't super fast the second one was 139 so we're talking like 636 40s pace which isn't really gonna hold up very well <laughs> so back into the assault bike well, assault bike's not in high rocks um it is in decafit so the transition between these two things is going to be important mostly like figuring out where i need to be in terms of power output and how sustainable it can be i don't want to start off in some sort of sprint and then come back and just be and just be dead as i get off of the assault bike or start out too hot and die by the end of the assault bike that's really not the way that you can be efficient on this thing so i, I need to f I'm, I'm working working quite a bit on the workouts around these bigger wednesday workouts to uh, really dial that in because it's not a very familiar place for me um the assault bike um and so the second one does end up being a little bit slower. The first one, 57 seconds, but that was without any transition. The sixth one, this next one is going to be about a minute and six. The, the, the RPMs were still around 75 to 73 ish for both of these. So it wasn't a huge drop off. Um, it was mostly on the transition time. Um, and again, headed, heading back out for the run. And this run was a little bit slower still. So this is 143 on that quarter. So that's something that I really am going to have to work on quite a bit um, is just making sure my running gets up. And it's been a minute for, for running for me. So I haven't necessarily spent a ton of time working at fast paces. Um, I was kind of on the shelf from January uh, to late March. So I'm just kind of getting back into it. So uh, the running didn't feel hard really in any of these but i also really wasn't pushing very hard so i think that has more to do with it than the actual demands of the race itself so here was a good push this was 10 10 meters straight um and then as i pull off again just drifting off i took a look at my watch to try to um manage the rest i don't believe i did it that well because i just looked at it once and didn't really have a plan so i'm definitely going to need a plan for the rest as uh like i get closer to the race here's a good look at the knee angle so each time i don't want to get any more than 90 degrees on the front leg it's gonna be the most powerful position that i can put it in so if i can maintain that if i overstep and, I, and that angle gets a little gets more closed like under 90 that then i lose power and it's hard for me to maintain that push so if i keep it at 90 on each leg and the back one at about maybe like 120 that's like the most powerful position for this sled push um i'm on my knees here <laughs> so this sled started to kind of go sideways and um something to be said about the carpet right like this carpet is pretty good for all i know I, I have another carpet that i do practice on that is way more slick than this the carpet in high rocks like seems to bunch up and i think that becomes a problem um for a lot of people so i'm expecting the sled push to be harder than this um and so my first sled push was about 338 and this sled push ends up about uh, three minutes so if we look at some of the top times in um in high rocks i'll just move that uh 
to right now, we'll take a look at, this is uh, my buddy Dave McGee, what he did this past weekend. Um, his sled push was about 305 for 50 meters. And that was really, really strong. Like if you watch that race, he was right up there with um, with Hunter and in the top of the race at that point. So I'm expecting that I would have a hard time with this, even though this sled push for 40 meters, about 303, it's another 10 meters, which was taking uh, quite a bit of time. So I would expect right now my sled push probably be closer um, to four minutes considering the, the the carpet and just the general uh, like unpreparedness for it and then just how hard this was. Um, this wasn't necessarily easy. You can see how that's popping up on, on the front there because I was too high. So I really need to make sure I get that hip, those hip, that hip angle right and those knees right um, to finish things up. But overall, I was like not super discouraged about this. This was really fun. I really liked it. So I just need to spend more time here um, working on pushing it at heavier and working on pushing it well under fatigue. Um, and that's that work out there. So that was definitely hard. <laughs> so um, after this workout, I did some sled pulls about Tabata. It didn't quite work out as Tabata, but um, still hooking up a rope onto that sled and pulling the high rocks weight. It felt pretty good. Um, again, not under fatigue, not with the, um, not under fatigue or um, or with the similar carpet. So I, I know that that's going to be a, an, an issue on the day itself. And when it comes to it, it's just, I'm just going to just hope that I can get through it. So this next workout was thousand meters on the ski erg, 400 meter run, then 50 wall balls, and then 400 meter run. Uh, I originally wrote it to be a rest after that, but I just forgot and started running uh, after the wall balls, which you don't necessarily need to do. But if you can run after 50 wall balls, um, that's a compromised running workout. Like if you can run after that, you can run after pretty much anything. So the ski erg itself, um, I set to about five on this. And this was hard. This was really hard at, the, at this point of the day. It's been a long day. I had this total day of work was about two hours. This is at the very back end of it. So this is probably like an hour 40 into my day of uh, working out. Um, again, after some running, after that first push uh, workout and after the um, pull workouts. And, and so here I am at the uh, skier again, and this was definitely a struggle. Um, I was around 149, 150 or so average for the the skier on the first one, and my time came out to um, 346 on this first one. But it was hard. I felt I felt really bad. <laughs> like my I, my core started to kind of cramp up, and just like the running form, it, my just ski ski form felt okay. I, I was thinking about how tired I was as opposed to keeping my form here. But uh, overall, it looks not bad. So you wanna make sure as you come up that your elbows stay bent pretty much the whole time. Like the old adage in the skier is a bent arm is a strong arm. So getting that full extension isn't necessary the way that you would want for a, um, a row where you wanna get as close to it as possible with a flat back here. You wanna keep that arm straight and, and really drive your hips back and down like to get into that deadlift position. And, and forcibly bringing, like pulling against um, the the ski erg itself, and, and, and like again driving that butt down to create that force. Um, so I've been putting some work in on this. I'm not as powerful as I think I would like to be on this because uh, I think size does have something to do with this. Right now during this workout, I was about 167, uh, where um, I think. A bigger athlete who has a, who can generate a little bit more force um, from the upper body and, and then being able to drive that down is going to have a bit of an easier time moving that ski erg. Uh, let's look at how Magita did on the ski erg over the weekend. He finished in a 103 and finished second in this the last Dallas race, which was fantastic, like an amazing race for him. Um, so he was 349, and my ski, my first ski erg on this was 346. So it was like comparable to where that would be, and you can see his was fifth overall. And when he came off of the ski erg, I believe he was in third or fourth. So we didn't really hammer this thing, so it's not necessary to go crazy. I think Hunter does really hammer this thing um, to kind of, he hammers all the workout zones. So if I can just manage this and it's so early in the race without going crazy and blowing myself up, um, I think I will have a just fine shot of being in a good position into the sled. So really this is just about surviving and um, doing it as efficiently as 
uh, possible on this. So as you continue to ski along, you see the triceps need to like as you press down extending the triceps is something i've really kind of put a focus on as well to get that full extension getting as much of it as i can and popping that chest up first before my arms come back up just to kind of keep my my chest up my my airway open so i'm not dipping my chin everything is up and neutral all the way through just to keep the the breathing practice in place as well um you can't see my feet but one thing i do try to think about is staying flat and level through my feet as I press down coming up onto your on my toes when my elbows come up and are bent and then driving down as hard as I can and focusing on the middle of my foot I was thinking about that periodically through this um, as I was just really really uh, tired so as I head out um, so this quarter was 143 um, again this is just the, like the running is just not 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 quite there. Um, here I am wasting time on my phone just to turn that off. And then it's 50 uh, wall balls here. So one thing with the wall balls, the most important thing I tried to practice is just getting into the flow and being able to catch it on my way down. Um, catching at the top is just not as efficient. So being able to toss it up and bring it back down is, is really going to be the best bet. Um, you can't quite see the target. It is hitting the target. There is um, like a double target the way they have it, High Rocks, where the bottom one is the female, the top is the male. And this is a 20 pound uh, med ball, which is the prescribed weight there. So for me, wall balls is just about breathing and it's, and it's really about managing shoulder fatigue. You'll see eventually I start to bring my shoulders down as the ball gets thrown up, so I'm not holding it up there as much. Uh, shoulders in general are just a typical weakness in shoulder endurance for sure is just like hard. So you can see there how I kind of bring them down um, and it just gives a little bit of reprieve. So it takes a little bit of tension off of that, those shoulders being up. Um, you'll see people do this or kind of like swing their arms like really crazy as they, they, they release and kind of like like breath, breath stroke it. Um, I just try to bring it down because it's not a ton of time. Um, but it's just about finding that rhythm, trying to keep my, like at this point I'm getting tired so my heels are coming up. Ideally, we want those heels to drive through the ground to generate that power through the hips and pop each time. So it's just like a thruster each time. It's a, it, it should be more of a ballistic movement. This is more of a hips movement than a shoulder movement um, if you do want to uh, help those shoulders in any way. Um, you want to catch it right in front, like again, every time I catch it, right in front of the chin, right back up. It's almost in the exact same spot. So this is where accuracy is really important. 50 unbroken, um, I don't think wall balls are that hard. <laughs> and again, this is at the end of the workout. So I was able to um, bust through that. That uh, 400 sucked really, really bad. And um, it was about 139, which I guess isn't horrible. Um, so I'll take, uh, uh, or no, I'm sorry. It was 156, so, oh no, no. It was not, it was just, it was, yeah, I think that one was 156. So I was really, really tired um, after that. And unfortunately, my uh, SD card runs out of space here. Just kind of learning how to do all, all of the work on uh, the GoPro. So the next time through, uh, run was probably as slow. Um, I was just dead at this point. Um, and in terms of workout volume, uh, this was probably a little bit too much. Uh, I don't have a ton of time. Uh, leading up to these two races. So getting this type of simulation in is probably gonna happen once a week. And I wouldn't necessarily even call it a simulation because it was broken out. So this is more like race date type of intervals where I would probably wanna spend eight to 12 minutes of work, um, which is kind of where these ended up. Like that first one was about 13 minutes. Um, this one ended up being just about the same. Um, and that's kind of where I would want it to end up being. Um, it did take a long time. This was a long day of work. Um, so ultimately I'd probably shorten one or two of these or skip the the um, middle workout again this was the whole entire workout um and what it looked like was uh that first sleds run um some that tabata was uh four minutes of just sled pulling 20 seconds on 10 seconds off it worked out kind of around there it's probably more like 25 on 10 uh like 25 off it was probably like one and one um just because like there was a transition issue with the rope it just took longer than i thought i wasn't able to just rest rest 10 10 seconds um and this last one and then i did finish up with an imam a 10 minute imam was pull-ups and toaster bar um but that's just so i stay sharp on some of those skills um this workout took about an hour 15 i think and i did run about 45 minutes before like i said with some faster turnover and some 200s and things like that so the workout was a lot it did 
take a long time. Um, so I think that this would only be sustainable for probably that pre-race period as it, as it leads in. So like I said, about four to six weeks out between either of those events. So that's kind of the, the, the position that I'm in. Um, so I'll probably continue these the next two or three weeks, um, breaking them out into different different sections. The sled is just gonna have to be part of it every single time, um, pushing that thing under fatigue, uh, trying to get it even a little bit heavier, just so I'm familiar with what that energy output is going to feel like and so I'm prepared for the rest. And knowing how hard I can push it and how quickly I can recover from it, so I'm just not like walking in circles, like waiting to, to feel better. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button to get all the latest updates for you for more workouts that come out for athlete interviews that we are doing here at Reinforce Running. Again, grab the, the Run Faster guide for long distance in the comments below to get that sent to your inbox for free. And that's it. We'll talk to you soon.